Hey guys, it's Tom with Watchin' River. Thanks for joining me today. Hey, today we're gonna talk about the warning signs that are abounding, that are pointing to the nearness of the seven year tribulation. If you watched my video yesterday in my opening remarks, I talked about how there are a lot of new viewers on this channel. And it came by way of something that I normally never talk about politics. And it was because of the things that have gone on in this country the last couple of weeks that I talked about it on videos. And it brought a lot of new viewers and it brought a sea of comments. And I told you yesterday that what blew my mind was reading so many of these comments was realizing how many people don't think we're in the last days. So I really sat back and I thought, okay, why do I truly believe we're in the very last days? Why do I truly believe the seven year tribulation could start at any time and hence the rapture happened before that seven year tribulation? And I went to my master list that I have here and I started looking through the list and I've been tweaking and adding to this list for the last almost three years. And I wanna, I wanna share this list with you guys. And I want you to always keep in mind what I say to you, the puzzle pieces. You can take any of these signs and say, well, that's always happened. But when you look at them collectively, each puzzle piece starts clicking into place. They start showing you a picture. And I believe all the puzzle pieces have clicked into place. And I think the last one's the rapture. And that's what we're waiting for. But I want to get into these signs. I want to, the first one, and this one is probably the most important one, in my opinion, is Israel becoming a nation in one day. May 14th, 1948, which is a fulfillment of Isaiah 66, verse 8. They became a nation in one day. Now, people who want to argue that Israel is not the Israel of the Bible, they say, well, do you realize how this nation came to be? It's like, do you realize it was prophesied that it would in one day? God never said, I'm going to use my most righteous people to get this nation to be a nation in one day. But it did. It became a nation in one day. And I really believe at that moment you could start saying, Jesus is coming soon. I really believe that. I want to go to the next point, And that is war in Israel. I think October 7th, 2023 was a major, major sign of the coming seven year tribulation. In fact, I started saying a day after that war started, I started saying, I think this is the war that will lead to the Daniel 9:27 covenant. I really believe this is the war that will lead to, we've got to fix this. And I mean, when I first said that, it sounds crazy because people are like, well, there's always been wars and skirmishes in Israel. I'm like, not with all the other signs in place. And now, like, we're on the verge right now, like today, of the Middle East exploding, exploding into major war, major war. Also, Israel becoming a cup of trembling to the whole world. Israel's on the front page. If we had paper newspapers, Israel's on the front page every day now. They have become a cup of trembling for the entire world. And it's, it's really amazing to see, like, the way people have turned away from Israel and you see these anti-Semitic, pro-Hamas, pro-Palestinian protests all over the world. To find places that support Israel, you've got to look at little pockets of some places in the world, but they're dwindling. The majority of the world is against Israel. And they don't want, you know, they talk about a two-state solution, but much of the world just wants Israel to be gone. It's a spiritual thing, but it's another puzzle piece. Click. <laughs> Talk about the apostasy in the churches. And right now I am broad brushing because there are some good, good biblically sound churches that are still teaching sound doctrine and have a biblical worldview. But you know what? The majority of them are completely lost. And they're 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 not even just completely lost. They're they're looking exactly like the world, but on the do I call it doing business, doing the same business on the other side of the street. 
you can go into some churches today, and I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about some supposedly evangelical churches. You can go in there and see dances and smoke shows and things that are so wicked. And it's like, this is just the world. Like, why do you come here? And then the pastors just tickle their ears. They don't talk about anything. They'll never mention the blood of Jesus. They'll never mention sin. It's just tickle, tickle, tickle. Come back next week and bring your wallet. And it's rampant. It's rampant. And it's getting worse all the time. The belief of a pre-tribulation rapture is just like, I can't believe, we just watch it every day disappearing. More and more. I used to believe that, but I no longer believe it. Why? Some say, so I, I, will, I don't want to, you know, I'm broad brushing. Some say, well, I studied the scriptures more and this is why. And I don't see eye to eye, but, you know, I give them kudos. Many of them say, well, I was watching this guy, John Rich, on Tucker Carlson, and he said there's no preacher rapture, so I'm questioning it now. It's like, okay, I hope you don't get all your theology from country singers. <laughs> it's, you know, I might I might like some of their old trucks and their dogs are cute, but I'm not getting my theology there. I go to the Word of God. But we're seeing an incredible falling away of the churches. Incredible. Some of the wickedness that they're doing in there is just outrageous. But we're in the last days. Puzzle piece. Now let's go to the wars and rumors of wars. This is the big one that people always say, well, that's always been there. Yeah, it has but not with all these other puzzle pieces, not with all these other signs ready for the seven-year tribulation. Now, wars and rumors of wars are talking about nuclear war, and they talk about it like it's nothing. Now, these same elitists who are threatening nuclear war on each other all over the place, they're the same ones who are telling you, don't eat a hamburger because you're heating up the world. You know, you're causing global warming, eating that beef burger, but oh, by the way, we're gonna nuke that country if they don't stop doing this. I'm sure that would be great for climate change. <laughs> it'll, it'll affect the climate real quick, like. But we're seeing alliances that we never dreamed of seeing. Russia and China look like buddy, buddy. You know, they're, they're drinking out of the same punch bowl. They got fancy cookies. Like, they have become very close. China, Russia, North Korea. And the weird thing is, countries are leaning on them because they've lost their trust in our country, the United States. They watched the way we pulled out of Afghanistan. And they're like, I'm not putting my trust. I'm not signing any kind of deal where they're going to protect me. And this is just all, to me, it's all part of Bible prophecy. Our country has to go away in order for all the, for the seven-year tribulation to begin. And we're watching it happen. Let's talk about riots and protests and unrest around the world. I've never seen the rioting and protests like I see globally now. It's just all over the world simultaneously, all the time. And that's one thing about these signs. So many of these signs is the world used to be so nation by nation. There was trouble in this part of the world, but this part of the world was very peaceful. And, and ever since the lockdowns in 2020, it seems like all problems affect the whole world now. And I really believe that's part of Bible prophecy, that it affects everyone. The whole world is obsessed with Israel, not just a little bit here. They're all watching. I don't think that could have happened without this technology, phones and, you know, satellites and all the technology we have nowadays. Let's talk about failing economies bank closures, inflation, everyone is saying, this whole world is in trouble financially. The whole world is. Yeah, we're close. We're in the end times. Another puzzle piece. Look at it individually. Well, there's always been some failing economies. You know, there's always been. With You got to look at every point I'm talking about as a puzzle piece and click them into place because they start painting a picture. Normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. Floods, droughts, fires, natural disasters on an unprecedented level, extreme weather events all over the world. I have been following this, especially since I started this channel almost 28 months ago. I follow it daily, and I have just seen an uptick in weather events that are just 
insane. Now the world says, well, that's because of climate change. The weather is changing. Other people say, well, these weather events, a lot of them are man-made, whether they are or not. I am seeing an uptick in floods and droughts and wow, fires like I have never seen. I look at it as a puzzle piece, another puzzle piece with all the other signs. Talk of coming famines. With these droughts and floods and fires, how many times do I read in the news, well, this has affected their crops, so cocoa is going to go up. Oh, well, this has affected the orange industry. Well, this has affected, it's just, there is a coming famine right now. They, there's a food crisis that they say has never, ever been like it is right now. And they're saying there's coming famine. At the same time, they tell us, you know, don't eat meat. And they're closing down farms to save the world. As they're saying, we have a coming famine. They're also making it harder for farmers to do their work. It's wild. It reminds me, look, do you guys ever look at this scripture closely? First Timothy chapter four, verses one through three. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, in the last days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods, don't eat meat, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving exactly what we're seeing today oh don't get married and don't eat that burger you're ruining the world don't have kids there's too many people in the world Paul knocked it out of the park with that wow Holy Spirit inspired words let's talk about pestilences and plagues and we don't really we can't get into the details because they can you know, get rid of your channel for this. But you know what went on in 2020. You know what we've seen. But do you think that's over? Some people do. They're really like, well, we're getting back to normal now. And it's like, do you ever see the news of what they're talking about is coming? Bird flus and, and pestilences and plagues coming from bats and chickens and pigs and cows and monkeys and <laughs> mosquitoes. It's a puzzle piece. Those are going to increase. They're going to be full. They're going to be rampant in the seven year tribulation. It's another puzzle piece. Let's talk about earthquakes. I'm not an earthquake expert in any way, but I know one thing they have picked up over the last 80 years, and they're getting more and more intense as we go along. Thousands a day, many times. Thousands. A day around the world. Volcanoes, oh my goodness, they're erupting all over the place. Incredible. They say there's a, a worldwide surge in great earthquakes have been seen in the last 20 years. And then the next thing is the appearances of strange things in the skies. Meteors, lenticular clouds. Yeah, I never saw lenticular cl clouds when I was growing up. You know those round clouds? They look, they almost look like a target. Sometimes they're red and they're just like perfectly round or they'll, they'll be round with a tail on it. They look demonic almost, but I've never seen so many pictures in the skies as I have in the last year of strange things in the skies. And I've had many people tell me, oh my goodness, I took a picture of this cloud. Now, I've never seen anything like this. Let's talk about lawlessness. On every level, from the very top to the very bottom, we live in the land of lawlessness. We'll see protests that aren't just protests, they're violence and people hurting other people and they'll get arrested and they'll be let go three hours later with no, no bail. And it's happening all over the world. It's changed so much. I can actually see it on the highways I drive on. Like people come by me, I swear if it was 20 years ago and they were driving like that, 
they would have been stopped a mile up the road. It's just, it's crazy. It's like the freeways are like a race car track now, you know, and it's because there's never consequences. They get a ticket, they throw it away. It's like, yeah, nobody will come after me, and they don't. How about a one world government? Do you think that could happen? I do. I think they're setting up for it right now. I think right now people are starting to cry out for a leader. Like, who is going to fix this? Who is going to fix this world? We are in crazy times. I don't know who's going to fix this, but somebody's got to fix this. I think they're crying out for it right now. I think that's why a lot of people have their hope in Donald Trump. I really think that they think he's going to fix it. We just need to buy more time. I happen to believe, and I'm not against Trump, and I'm not against Biden. I, well, <laughs> I, I definitely lean more right than left, but I, I don't like politics. so. But I don't see it. All I see is a country falling apart, a world falling apart, and all of these signs I've been talking about ready for that seven-year tribulation to begin. I only have my hope in Jesus. Jesus alone. I don't have my hope in anything else. Just Jesus. You look at the last two weeks in this country, we've had a former president try to be assassinated. We've had the president who was running for re-election drop out of the race. And then all of a sudden, the vice president is running for the president. And they take the millions of dollars in donations that were made to President Biden, and they just transfer them to Kamala. I, I don't know that much about the legalities of politics, but I'm pretty sure that's illegal. But I'll tell you one thing, if I had donated to President Biden and then it was handed off to somebody else, I'd be like, I want my donation back, you know, but we're just looking at a crumbling United States as we look at all these other signs that are just ramping up, pointing to that seven year tribulation. How about a one world religion? Is that within sight? Do you know about the Abrahamic family house in Abu Dhabi? It's ready. The Abraham Accords. Now they're talking the Abraham Alliance. It's ready. What about the love of many growing cold and people calling good what is evil and calling evil what is good? I've never seen anything like it. It's all over the place. We used to talk about when I was young, the technology for the mark of the beast. We couldn't understand it. Uh, some versions of the Bible say it's in the forehead or the arm and or in the hand. And some people say it's a mark on the forehead or the hand. So when technology came out where they could plant a chip under your skin, we're like, that's it. Some people said, no, I really do think it's a mark, like a tattoo, but that can't carry information. But now they have the technology that they can put your banking information, your health information, all your on a tattoo. So regardless of it's if it's in the skin or on the skin, they got the technology. It's set up. That wasn't there. Many people will say, Tom, I'm sure right before World War II started, people were thinking the rapture was going to come soon. It's like, okay, but did they have all these signs that I've talked about? Were all these signs there? Did they have the technology for the mark of the beast? Because you have to have that. Did they have the, were they talking about building the third temple in Israel like they're doing now? Because that's my next point talk about the third temple and they're not just kidding around they've been talking about this for at least 20 years but now some people are saying they're building panels for it off site they have for the first time in 2000 years the red heifers they need the ashes of those red heifers at least one red heifer for purification we're waiting for that temple to be built now i don't think that temple is built until after the rapture. I think after the rapture, when the Antichrist signs the Daniel 9.27 seven-year agreement, that's what will give Israel the right to build their temple. That's what I believe. 
but it's there, it's waiting, it's ready. What about lies, deceptions, and distractions? Do we not see that every single day? I've told you guys many times, I don't know what to trust. Oh, I trust Jesus. Beside Jesus, I look through the news and I'm like, okay, well, I verified it here, there, and there, but I'm verifying it with sources that I don't really trust because I don't trust any of the sources for the news I share. I just try to verify it in quite a few places. Then I go, okay, I think this is going on. It's very hard to really get the bottom line truth. Are you going to go to the mainstream media for the bottom line truth? I don't. I haven't for a long time. I wrote a song in the 90s called Newsman talking about how I didn't believe the mainstream media. Lies, deception, and distraction. And speaking of that, what about artificial intelligence? Have you ever seen a technology come on the scene and be pushed so hard, so fast? I've never seen anything like it. And it's artificial intelligence. Fake intelligence, but kind of being pushed off as something that can make your life better. If it's fake intelligence, personally, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't. But they're lining up for it. Every company. If you're not using AI, you are behind the times. And the things AI has been caught doing are just this. They call it, they, they have a nice word they've discovered for lies. They call it hallucinations. Oh, the AI is hallucinating. It's lying. <laughs> and many people tell me, they're, you know, don't worry, it's not demonic. Because demonic forces can't, and it can only spit out what's put into it. And I always say, well, that's like saying the Ouija board is just cardboard and a plastic controller. It, nothing demonic can happen with the Ouija board. Well, when human beings start playing with the Ouija board, many bad things can happen and have happened. It's documented. I, most of you have a story. <laughs> I know whenever I talk about a Ouija board, everyone around me has a story. And I think it's the same thing with AI. Yeah. Yeah. It's programmed by humans. It can only spit out what's been programmed. But there are weird things happening when humans start playing with it. And I think demonic entities enter into it. I, I'm not saying AI is 100% bad. Because I think there are potentially, potentially good things to come out of it. But I think it's all part of the system that's going to be used heavily during the seven-year tribulation. I call it the beast system. What about the rise of Satanism and the rise of evil in this world? It, it's mind-numbing to me to watch what goes on at like sporting events. Like they have the opening ceremonies of different sporting events around the world. And it's all like satanic rituals. It's like, when did this start happening? I'm sure if you watch the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, you'll see some crazy stuff. I think that opens, I think the opening ceremonies might be today. You'll see some crazy stuff. You can't, pop stars, you watch their concerts now. It's like, when did satanic rituals enter into the, you know, Casey Kasem's top 40? <laughs> it's, it's, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I once saw a video and it showed all these pop stars. I don't know their names. I'm too old. And it said, what happens to them? And it showed them when they were like teenagers, maybe working for the Disney Channel to where they went after they got famous. And they show the transformation of these, a lot of them are girls. And they go from being these little pretty young girls to like, they look like Satanist. You know, it's just so weird. We're in the last days. We're in the last days. It's all turned dark. So my point of all of this is take a look at all these puzzle pieces. All of them. They've all painted a picture of that seven-year tribulation that's about to begin. And this is why I can't put my hope in politics. I really think we're so close. I'm not telling anyone if we're here in November to not vote. I've told you at least three times I've voted in every election since I was 18, even the local ones. Because I think it's an important thing to do. Even if it's getting harder and harder to do, it's a freedom that we, you know, 
man, it's all a game. It's all a sh My wife always says about politics, it's all a show. It's all a show, and it is. It is. When I watched... Uh, I didn't really want to get into this, but I'm going to... When I watched him, meaning President, former President Trump, almost get assassinated... And you started seeing all the things that went on around that. It's hard to not see. It was an inside job. Like, it's hard to not... Like, like the, the, the SS, I'll say, had their sights on the guy who's laying on his stomach, pointing a gun at this guy. And they wait till he starts firing to fire on him. That was the first night. And I was like, oh my goodness. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Okay, they missed. They, that was meant to get him. But here's what blew me away. See, because you guys are going to go, oh, you're just, you're just for Trump. I'm going to tell you something. When Trump said, after he was shot, one of the things he said was, I'm going to come out and say some things. And I'm like, good. He's going to say, they tried to off me. It was an inside job. And he didn't. He came out and he praised the Secret Service for a fine job. And that's when I was just like, this is the weirdest show I've ever seen. What is going on? And I'll tell you. Jesus is coming back soon because we're living in a land of lies and deception. He's coming soon to rapture his church in a pre-tribulation rapture. We're there. We're waiting for it. All right. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I had a few news items. I'm just going to really shotgun stuff really quick. Just so there's not a lot going on today in the news. Um, the Olympics start today and there was a, the French, this is from the BBC, the French high speed rail was sabotaged this morning before the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. They said the French rail company, SNCF, says 800,000 passengers have been affected by what they called an act of sabotage, a series of fires caused um, the disruptions early this morning, hours before the Olympics opening ceremony. Um, they reported that unknown militants and saboteurs detonated high-capable explosives on various sectors of the French railway system nationwide. Um, they also, another source said, a coordinated sabotage has paralyzed France's high-speed rail network, impacting million, uh, a quarter million travelers. The number is set to rise to 800,000 by the end of the day. Next, we've got Netanyahu and, and Biden. They sat down for a meeting, and I guess it was a little tense, and they talked ceasefire talks yesterday. Um, nothing major came out of that. Next, Hamas. This is from Israel Today. Hamas has reportedly rejected Israel's ceasefire condition that all Palestinians returning to northern Gaza pass a security check to ensure they are not members of the terrorist organization. They didn't like that, so they have once again, re you know, rejected that condition of this ceasefire that may never happen because it's so crazy. Next from Israel today, the Houthi leadership in Yemen, they warned that its response to last Saturday's Israeli Air Force strike on the port of Hodeida is coming soon. The Houthis say they are continuing with phase five of the combined assault on Israel and will not be deterred by the unprecedented Israeli bombardment of Hodeida. What else? Um, the IDF has announced that it has completed all preparations for a ground maneuver and a massive air campaign against Hezbollah in Lebanon. That could start any time. Some people are saying August. Some people are saying within the next few days. I don't know. They're saying that the United States has given them permission to do that now. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. Not that important. Uh, I'll just get earthquakes. The last 24 hours, there was 32 over 4.0 and 7 over 5.0. Um, I'm going to quickly share the gospel and then I am going to turn the camera off. And I'm just going to tell you, like, you can, you can hear all these things I've talked about, all these signs. And all I can say is, if you heard these signs and you really did think this is a different time period with all these things happening simultaneously, what does this mean? What does it, it means Jesus is coming soon. And it means if you don't know him, you have to, you have to turn to him now. 
So I'm going to tell you what he did, and then the, the decision is going to be yours. Jesus came here 2,000 years ago to solve the sin problem because we're all sinners. We needed a rescue because for sin comes death. When we sin, we earn, we earn death. We earn hell. Anyone, if you don't know Jesus, you're born heading toward hell. But, but God didn't want us to go there, so he sent a rescue mission, Jesus, his only begotten son. And Jesus came here and he lived perfectly. He never sinned once. His performance was perfect. And he knew the entire time he was here that he had come here to shed his blood because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Blood has to be shed in order for sin to be erased. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus went to the cross and every sin that you have ever done was placed on Jesus. And he died and his last words were, it is finished because the sin problem had been paid for. That debt had been paid for in full by the blood of the lamb, the lamb of God, Jesus. Jesus paid for your sins with his blood and he wants to spend eternity with you. And all you have to do is Jesus, I'm a sinner and I believe your blood washed my sins away. I believe that you washed me white as snow with your blood. I believe you came here and I believe you went to the cross. I believe in your death, your burial, your resurrection, and that precious blood. I need a savior and you're the savior of the world. Oh Lord, I believe in what you did. Thank you. You are saved. The Holy Spirit will be placed inside of you and you will be born again. You will be rapture ready. You will not face the seven year tribulation that's about to begin. You will be raptured. You will be with brothers and sisters for eternity. Even the people that don't believe in the rapture will be raptured if they have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them. That's what you need. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you are not being raptured. If you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, you are being raptured. God is, will bring home all his children. Jesus said he was going to prepare a place for us and come back and take us home. That's what the rapture is. And I believe it's about to happen. Okay? Choose wisely. Choose wisely. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords paid for your sins with his blood. We're saved by grace through faith. Grace is an unearned gift from God through faith in what Jesus did for us. I hope you choose wisely. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and today's a perfectly good day for the rapture, but if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.